stocks down, volatility up. So as the fear index soars, what is worrying investors most? According to Investopedia's latest sentiment survey, inflation, recession, and rising interest rates top the list. Editor-in-chief Caleb Silver joins us now with an exclusive look at the results. Caleb, good to see you again. Welcome back to Fast. Um, I want to start off with one of the questions, the $10,000 question, because I think that really, it really shows what people are thinking right now. What would you do if you had an extra $10,000 in cash? Yeah, this caught me by surprise, too. We've been asking that question for the past year and a half. What would you do with an extra 10 grand? Our readers, they are retail investors. They like to get into the action. But for the first time, they say, we're going to keep it in cash. They're going to put it right in the bank. That surprised me a lot. Usually, they're a little bit more promiscuous, looking to buy the dip. But not this time. They fear that the market has further to fall. Promiscuous. Interesting term. Thank yeah. You. So they're really, they're really scared. I mean, they don't know what else to do except for just sit on cash. Because I would think that at one point they were saying, buy crypto, buy meme stocks, buy funds, you know, whatever it is, all the options out there. And now it's just down to cold, hard cash. Yeah, right now, and especially over the past few weeks, and we fielded the survey right up until yesterday afternoon, yeah. people are freaking out. So they feel like they're on thin ice. Most of them feel like the market has further to fall. They feel, most of them feel like the market has another 5 to 10 percent at least to fall over the next six months. This is as scared as we've seen them, and we talked about this being potentially a contrarian indicator. Sometimes it is. This one doesn't feel that way just because of the preponderance of just anxiety and the things they're searching for. That's really got our attention. What are they worried about the most, and has that changed since the last survey? They're worried about losing what they had in their portfolios. They're losing about further losses. They're worried about, obviously, the, the hydra of inflation, higher interest rates, uh, and what's going on in terms of uh, uh, recession fears. So all those things, one at a time, would be very scary. Put them all together, plus the hawkish talk from the Fed, that's got them really back on their heels right now for the first time. That said, there are always a lot of readers that are looking for opportunities, looking to buy the dip, looking to put money to work. Are you seeing them change the, the look of their portfolio out of some of the high flyers and into like a more defensive, I don't know, P&G or something like that? Yeah, we always ask them for their top stocks. And those have remained pretty consistent, and they still are the big names that everybody knows, the Home Cook and the Apples, the Amazons, the Microsoft, always topping the list. You've seen some oil come back in there in the last few months. But this time, those, those top 10 stocks have stayed pretty consistent. But they are asking questions like how to buy Treasury bonds, uh, best CD rates right now, the top four government bond ETFs. ETFs, and then what is a double bottom? That's a big question right now. Everyone's wondering, is this a double bottom? We won't know until we know. But that, that was going to be my question. And when you mentioned also just the discussion about putting 10000 in cash, so to the bond market, because for so many of these folks, they've never invested. Karen gave a little <laughs> instructional video on this the other night. It was her first time buying a Treasury bond. For so many people, 4% cash, or effectively what you could get at the short end of the curve, is once in a lifetime for these people. Yeah, and they'll sign up for it right now. A lot of them would, that is. Uh, and a lot of them are just saying, you know what, I don't even want to do anything. They're, the choice to do nothing is a choice that they're making as well right now, which I also find interesting because they're always looking for opportunity. They're just not looking for opportunity in the stock market as much right now. You've been doing this for a while. So these, what you just talked about surprises you. So can you speak to that? Because it, it basically means something has effectively changed over the last 15 or so years. Yeah, these are retail investors. These are do-it-yourselfers in a lot of cases. Some of them have financial advisors, but they've always looked for opportunity. We were looking at anxiety all the way back in 2007 and 2008. We have data that goes all the way back. We've been around since 1999, but this is sort of not a, a fear of the market collapsing per se, but just that I just don't want to go near it, and I haven't seen that reaction from them since we started the survey two and a half years ago. This is as back on their heels as I've seen them. Caleb, always good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Caleb Silver of Investopedia. Do you use this as a contrarian indicator? I love it. I, I've always liked his work, and I love when he comes on. Um, and, you know, just from a sentiment standpoint, it's really interesting. You think about retail, and I think it's interesting that he mentioned that some retailers have, uh, retail investors have uh, advisors. The ones that don't got banged in SPACs and NFTs and crypto. I mean, the yeah. list goes oh, on and on, right. and they may not come back. 